everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Album. Today I'm going to show you something a little different. Now I've done this before and it was one of my most watched videos. And you know, to me it's sort of a mess, you know? A lot of people make cards using card sketches and I do also. And sometimes you'll make cards based on a die you have or um, an individual paper. Or you go to Pinterest and get some ideas and you make one card and it's a work of art and the cards are beautiful and sketches make beautiful cards and you don't have to think but sometimes they just have a lot of scraps left over at the end of a project and i just want to get some cards made and i don't look up sketches if i have big scraps i'll consider five by seven cards but in this case i just had a lot of small scraps and they came from a six by six doodle bug paper pad where the image is really small. So I made small cards, the four and a quarter by five and a half. So first I'm going to cut a base out of cardstock that is going to be four and one sixteenths by five and five sixteenths. Then I will use my pattern paper and cut smaller pieces. So they will be four and seven eighths by five. I'm looking at a ruler as I'm talking to you. Um, five and one eighth about there. Uh, you'll notice later I, I didn't do too good at measuring. I eyeballed a lot of it. Then I take all the smaller pieces and I take the smaller scraps of my coordinating cardstock and I just make squares and rectangles with uh, a sixteenth of an inch border. A little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch border. And then what I'll do is I will place them on my cardstock bases. So I like to, if I used blue cardstock, I like my squares and rectangles to be uh, edged in blue cardstock, but it doesn't always work out that way. I have some at the end. I also was trying to ones that had snow patterns. I tried to kept keep with snow patterns. So if I had any left over, I could keep them in my stash and use them for non-winter cards, just, you know, blue and purple cards. So then I'll just lay it out and um, just make it a pile, put three, four, five different elements on it, and then I start gluing. And that is really the fun part. So I'll glue my uh, bigger piece on, and then I'll play around trying to figure out what the best way of uh, adding the squares and rectangles. And I take some of my scraps and put them underneath the elements I put on just so they're the same level. And that also uses up a bunch of scraps. You'll be amazed at the end. I have less than a handful of scraps. So anyhow, I take little pieces and put them in. And they have this sentiment I cut off from a three by four cut apart from something else. And I'm trying to figure out what to use. So again, this was using the six by six doodle bug and they just shrink down the 12 by 12 collection. So even though it's pretty small, I do have that little cut apart and it adds a little element. I messed up when I ordered. I should have ordered the, I guess it's called bits and pieces with doodle bug, um, you know, to get like the a three inch snowman or things like that. And I made the mini album using a lot of fussy cut elements. So if I had that, it would have made it a lot easier because I like having that, that big fun focal point, especially with doodle book. As you can see, I put a border strip on this card. Now I'm trying to get the layers uh, right again. Um, you could either put it on a base or in this case, I take little strips of cardstock and add it to the edges. You'll see in just a second. I used a light blue on the bottom and just glue everything on. Not sure if I want to use the let it snow. Looking at all my other sentiments. And that said snow happy together, I just did snow happy and cut a fishtail and called it a day. 
All right, this one I'll show you the teeny strips of paper. See, that's from either cutting something down a little bit because I mismeasure usually, or I purposely cut down little strips about a sixteenth of an inch wide. Um, I know that Christy Marcotte sells, or not sells, but she recommends peel offs, which are fabulous. I wish I had some, but since I live and travel in my RV and they come from overseas, I'm not in a place long enough to be guaranteed that I'll get my mail in time. That is the number one asked question. When people meet me and they say, oh, you live in your RV? I said, well, yeah, I travel in it. I'm not like parked on the side of the road. How do you get your mail? That's the number one question. Uh, we have a mail service in Texas where everything goes to. But to be honest, I mean, what goes to my mail except for deliveries, scrapbooking deliveries, and Amazon. We order a lot of stuff through Amazon. Uh, we don't really get any mail. Everything's done online. Um, but at this point, I am in a place for a, a month or so, so I can get some deliveries. And that's why you've been seeing a lot of new projects, because I've been getting a lot of stuff this this winter. So looking at this thinking of you trying to figure out how I'm going to add that with this dark blue, and I'm sorry that I'm off screen. I cut these little uh, tags from one of the pages and I thought, well, they'll work. You know, if I don't have the bits and pieces, I can use some of those elements from the tag. I put two aside that I thought might work and that one with the penguin. I have the penguin and the Yeti. And I'm just sort of looking at them at the card, trying to decide which is going to work best with it. The Yeti sort of blends into the background and actually so do the penguins, but I've got the penguins on the paper. So I layer them on a scrap of cardstock, just glue it on and cut around it. Sorry, again, I'm off camera. I started this late at night, so I wasn't, I wasn't thinking. Um, anyhow, you could see the card design a little bit. So I put it on there and get out. I'm getting out my uh, little baker's twine and I have this iridescent baker's twine. I didn't want anything really stripey. So I took the baker's twine and uh, cut it down a couple of inches. You see me finagling with the baker's twine, put it through and then pull it up. I needed to use a tool, I think. And I just add a dot of glue just so that baker's twine doesn't unravel. And then I will cut off the top of the baker's twine. And I'll glue the other things on. See how small those images are? It's okay for this page, all the snowflakes. That'll work okay. So I put my blue square down, my larger rectangle on the top. I think this one actually came from some 12 by 12 paper. I had made this fun little mini album. I really love it. You'll have to look up uh, in one of the videos. I don't know if it's the one I did right before this or right after this, but it was a little different. I didn't make a hinge on it. I just thought I'd do something a little different. So if you haven't made a hinge to make a mini album, you want to make a little scrapbook. This paper is adorable. Just adorable, as all doodlebug paper is. So I like when I put an element on that I sort of touch all of the other elements. I feel like it pulls it together, meaning it touches that dark blue, it touches the rectangle, and it touches the base paper. So here I'm doing it again. I have, I guess I was pretty sure of my design. Now I forget what design I did. Oh, just a couple of layered rectangle. I take one of the tiny, teeny tiny cut aparts, layer up the base and put it on, call it a day. This one I'm going to do something a little different with. So I have this little uh, piece of the, um, from the sticker sheet, and I'm going to take uh, something to put on top of it just to sort of separate it or else it's going to blend into the background. I lay a strip of glue on the side and then I have these about a two inch piece by one sixteenth of an inch. I put it down and then I cut on the sides, glue everything down. In this case, the big rectangle is bigger than the base, but that's okay. Once you put it on the white card base, it'll look fine. 
So I just keep on going. I'm going to do some more layering, add those little strips of paper because I like them, and just see what I can use and try to use up my stash. So let's see the other ones. I'll go a little bit fast so we can finish up with the rest of this. So I just continue with the layering process, add uh, layers underneath if it's hanging off the side. Um, I'm starting to run out of some base pieces. I saved all of the coordinating uh, patterns to, I just save them because I don't have to use them up. It's not the winter theme. And actually a lot of them are pretty colors I could use for Easter. So I don't consider that part of the collection. It's just part of the coordinating stuff that I'll keep until I use it up. Um, yeah, making use of, in this case, that little border strip. It was smaller than the paper. So I cut the paper down and put little uh, corner rounder on the bottom and just made it part of the design. All right, here I cut the base pieces. Now, what I do is I score the whole sheet first, then I cut it and then I will fold it. So I'm not scoring individually. I mean, it only saves two seconds of work. And then I start adding all of my cards to my white bases. There's no magic to that. I decide to round the bottoms of that corner. I'm just using white cardstock for the bases. And some other ones, I'll use different colors, but uh, I just kept it simple, but I do add stuff to the inside of the card, and I'm going to show you my trick for that in just a little bit. I think I have two more. Oh, that's it. That's all the cards, and again, I'll show you pictures of them. So uh, this is what I have left. Let me slow down for a sec. I have that little drawer divider to the right of the screen. The ones in the first bin are just sort of little cut aparts. The second bin are strips of paper that are winter paper that I have to use. The one I've got in my hand is generic. I'm putting that aside. You see on the top of the screen on the left hand side, those are all rectangles and squares that are generic. They're not winter themed. There's no snowflakes or snowmen or snow houses on them. So those I'll put aside with my stash. And to be honest, I've got some monster dies that went with a doodlebug collection from last year. I thought I might use those and make just some fun birthday cards with monsters with the blues and purple. So I'm just going to put those aside. So now I take my little banner punch. This is my best friend for using up scraps. I just cut whatever I can. I'll try to cut some long ones. I wanted to get that snowflake in there. Um, some short ones, some really squatty ones. Um, if there is an image like the Yeti or uh, the penguins and I can get it on, then I will try to preserve that image and have it. And that'll be the, the banner on top. You'll see how I place it on here. But anyhow, just doing my best to use up the rest of my little scraps and using my banner punch. I don't like the banner punch in that it takes up a lot of room in my drawer. Again, I live in my RV, space is at a premium. I have one shallow drawer of punches and this one always gets stuck in the drawer. See how I'm trying to cut it to save the image on the paper? You'll see how I use that later. So um, this adds a nice little element inside the cards. I try to match it with the front of the cards. So if I have dark blue on the front of the cards, I try to do something with dark blue on the inside of the card to coordinate. I'm sure nobody notices but me, but, you know, that's just how I try to be creative. I loved this dark blue, so I made a lot of shorter, squattier ones. Uh, I'll cut it later, but um, it just adds a nice punch to the pages. So even though this is not a banner, I'll take my scissors later and cut off that little uh, arrow tail to it. So I'll finish with this part and then we'll see what we have when I'm done. I lay all those banner pieces out so I can see what I have. I have 10 cards. I usually use three banner pieces. Do you think I have enough? Do you think I will use them all up? 
we'll wait and see because the bad thing is if I don't use it up that will mean I have scraps left over so uh, I take all these little pieces and I throw them I have a little uh, trash can right next to my desk that I just throw them in so here I'll take one long one one shorter medium size one and then a, another one for the very top if I can use an image I'll put it on top or that little that dark blue one I liked I use that a lot there's the trees there's snowflakes there's the dark blue image there's the house one I covered it up a little bit but doesn't it add a lot of color inside and it uses up all those little itty bitty pieces of paper that you might have left after you finish using a collection getting close to the end I think is this my last card I still have banner pieces left over and I still have pieces left over over to the right hand side nope that's what I have left that's what I have left I take out the pieces that I will use on envelopes or there's a couple of sentiments that I will keep to do when I do the monster cards and that is what I have left out of the six by six paper pad and all the scraps left from a 12 by 12 set after I made this fabulous mini album let me show you some of the cards that I made uh, just a little bit better picture so here we go so just some close-ups of them and as I'm going through them I realize you know I need to add some enamel dots so I will do that sorry I didn't do it for this video but I wanted to get this out to you today and that is what I have for you today I hope you enjoyed this it is not a process for everyone I don't know that I explained it the best if you're not comfortable of course use card sketches there are some fabulous card sketches out there it's just what I do when I'm going freestyle so thanks again for watching and have a fabulous day.